We are going to continue talking about ways to draw organic molecules. We're going to talk about how to draw resonance, structure, resonance structures, Lewis structures today. And then at the end of class, we're going to do an active learning activity. I have to get a certain amount done in three lectures for the filming. And after we're done with that, then we're good to go to do whatever we want. Okay? All right, so we talked last time about drawing 3D structures. And so 3D structures, not worrying too much about these until we get to chapter 5. And then when we get to chapter 5, we'll be drawing these all the time. But when you draw a 3D structure, correct bond angles are included. Or I should say, correct bond angles are required. Okay, so we're trying to convey how something is, looks in three-dimensional space. We said with a Lewis structure, you don't have to show correct bond angles, but with a 3D structure, you'll sometimes see it drawn 3D dash wedge is, is one way to do it. So, um, for example, this bond angle should look to be about 120. How do we know that bond angle is um, 120 degrees? Well, we're going to talk about that coming up, okay, if you don't remember that from GCHEM. Uh, and then we have this here. That should look to be a little smaller than 120, a 109.5. How do we know that's 109.5? Again, we're going to talk about that coming up. All right, so that's what we have when we have a 3D structure. And then a, 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 another way to draw structures that I'm sure that you haven't seen is skeletal or bond line structures. This is going to save us a lot of time when we're drawing. And if you look at the structures that we have on the very first page of the notes, there's a, a lot of skeletal structures in those. And if you had to draw them with every single atom, it would take you a long time to do that. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So it's a simplified way of drawing, um, especially uh, drawings that contain rings. It's very, very helpful when it's a, bond, uh, a structure that contains rings. So the guidelines assuming, assume that there is a carbon at the junction of any two lines or at the end of any line. So for example, if I have this, that means that um, at this juncture right here, right there, that means there's a carbon. At the juncture of any line is a carbon. Assume there are enough hydrogens around each carbon to make it tetravalent. So carbon would, that means carbon would have four bonds. So the, um, the three hydrogens, these are three hydrogens here, okay? So this is a carbon. This is a carbon with three hydrogens. This is a carbon with three hydrogens. The carbon in the center needs two more um, hydrogens to be, to have four bonds. Tetravalent, another way of saying it has four bonds. So that's what that would be. So this structure here is equivalent to that. It saved us a lot of time in drawing, okay? So we do use skeletal structures. There are some students who just don't ever feel comfortable with skeletal structures. And if they see a skeletal structure on a test, they write it out with all of the atoms there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine, OK? Um, so uh, you, you have to, so carbons are understood heteroatoms. Heteroatoms are things other than carbon. Like our, the most famous ones for us are oxygen, nitrogen, and the halogens. You do have to draw those. Carbon atoms in a straight chain are drawn as a zigzag. Lone pairs are often left out and are understood. Okay, may not be understood by everybody, but they are understood. Um, you always have to include formal charges. Okay, you have to include formal charges because if one of these two carbons on the end here had a formal charge, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be having that many hydrogens. So we. It needs to be clear to anybody in the whole world what you're trying to convey. And so we always need formal charges in all of the different ways that we have to draw structures. Okay, again, lone pairs don't have to have. So the skeletal structure of the sample compound that we've already talked about would look like this. Okay, so let's label what that means. Okay, so this one right here, that's a, that's a CH3, that's an end of a line. Therefore, it's a CH3. Okay. 
there is a hydrogen bonded to this carbon. We want to make that carbon tetravalent. It's not charged, so it needs to be tetravalent, okay? So the hydrogen bonded to this carbon is not required. You can draw it if you want. So we can, we can actually use a combination of condensed and um, skeletal. <clears throat> you can draw it if you want. And, and I think that looks a little weird without that hydrogen drawn in, so I don't think I ever draw it that way. I think that that hydrogen, um, I draw it in, okay? Um, this oxygen right here has a positive charge. This is required. Okay. And this hydrogen right here is also required. It's required. It's only not required when you have it bonded to a carbon, but if you have a hydrogen bonded to a heteroatom, you have to draw the hydrogen in. This hydrogen is required because it is bonded to something other than carbon. Questions so far on skeletal structures? Anybody? All right, so let's redraw the following compound showing all atoms, lone pairs, and formal charges. Okay, so I'm looking at this carbon right here. That carbon right here is bonded to three things. It's at the juncture of two lines. That means that um, there's a hydrogen there. So let's draw all of the atoms in. Lone pairs are not required. You can draw them in, though. I'm going to draw them in just for the heck of it. Okay. And then that. So it's going to look like that. That's what that means. And rings especially. Um, we're going to draw this. So this is a this is a six-membered ring with carbons all in the ring. Let's draw that. It just takes a lot longer to draw. I'm so glad we have the shorthand way of doing it. Okay, so this carbon has two hydrogens to make it tetravalent. This carbon has two hydrogens to make it tetravalent. This carbon has two hydrogens. This carbon has two hydrogen. That carbon's got a negative charge. So what do we put on that carbon? How many hydrogens? One hydrogen and a lone pair. Now, the lone pair is not required. I like to put it there myself. I usually do put that there, okay? So I'm going to go like this. Do you have a question? Yeah, put the back, oh, yeah. Go ahead. So there's going to be another carbon on the left, on the right hand side of the group. Oh, yeah, this one here, yeah. I, I, I heard, yeah, you, I usually know when I've made a mistake because I'll hear a little shh. And I should just ask you. I, I gotta learn to just ask you. Yeah, I'm missing a carbon. See, I would have missed that one on the test. Okay. Yeah. Everything else good? Everything else looks good to me. So you see, you have to know carbon with a negative charge has three bonds and a lone pair. So it may be worth your while to like just memorize those 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 common charges that we're gonna see over and over again. Okay, so let's see. Keep it, yeah. Is it okay if you're limited in space to draw the hydrogens within the carbon ring, or no? Uh, yeah, it's generally not drawn that way, but right now you haven't heard that rule, so it's okay. <laughs> Go at it, you know. <laughs> Sapling will not let you do that, so it's probably a good idea not to. Sapling will mark it wrong. Okay, there's also something else about sapling. Sapling um, will sometimes, I think I've taken them all out. Sapling, sapling will sometimes draw them like this. Let's turn that on. 
That's not legal. That's not legal. Okay? You can't draw it that way. You know, like I could put a CH3 here, but these carbons here are not okay. You don't want to draw it that way. That's not really skeletal if you're putting a carbon at the end of every line, okay? So I believe I've taken them all out. If, if I did leave one in where they draw it that way, please let me know so I can remove it from the, the worksheet, okay? It is common to use more than one type of structure. So again, if you turn to that very first page of the notes, they use a combination of skeletal, condensed, you know, it's, we're not super strict about this. So, for example, all right, so, I didn't want to draw out that oxygen carbon bond and I didn't want to draw the three bonds to hydrogen for that. That's okay. This is condensed. And, and CH3s, are, those are called methyl groups. We're going to talk about that nomenclature coming up later in the quarter, but it's super common just to write them as CH3 without drawing them all completely out. And, and maybe you don't like the way this looks with this. Sometimes I feel that way. I, ah, I don't like the way this looks with this um, bond here. And so I will sometimes write a CH3, okay? So like that. Um, I will say that you want to, I will say one thing here. If you draw CH3, you can draw like this, and then sometimes, and then you can also draw it like this, or you can draw it like this. It's perfectly fine to draw it like that. If you go into ChemDraw and you, and you try to label a bond and you write CH3, it will flip it around, so it's this way, okay? So it will flip it around automatically. Um, that's legal, though, and so is that legal to write it like that. But um, it is not legal to do that with, say, an OH. So OH here, this should be OH, not. Not OH. Okay, so carbon gets things that oxygens and nitrogens don't. You don't want to draw it that way, okay? So this is a problem. So you may just want to flip these things around anyway, okay? So we, we have some flexibility here how you want to draw things, and again, if you want to draw every single bond, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Questions on skeletal structures? All right. Let's talk about how to draw Lewis structures. It's a mixed bag in here. Some of you are really good at Lewis structures, some of you are not, and some of it depends on your preparation for this class. So, for example, if you had AP chemistry in high school and you skipped over Chem 1A, that's where we learned to draw Lewis structures. So you've, you've missed out on that. On, on that. Um, and so, and also, it might have been a couple years since you've had um, AP chemistry. So we start from ground zero here um, and, and talk about how to do this. A couple things are different than, in some ways it's easier than GCHEM. GCHEM you have the whole periodic table here. We just have a really small amount of the periodic table. And so, um, but one thing that's really different is in GCHEM, you always had a central atom when you were drawing Lewis structures. We don't necessarily have a central atom. So, um, for example, where's the central atom here? There is no central atom, okay? So that's something that's completely different. All right, let's talk about the traditional method, and then we're going to have shortcuts that we can do. And as you go along, you'll be adopting more of the shortcuts. Arrange atoms in the proper orientation. We have condensed structures, so that's easier for you to do than maybe in GCHEM. Sum the valence electrons for all atoms. Sometimes we don't even have to do that, but if you have a charged molecule, I highly recommend that you add up the electrons, okay? So you make sure you're drawing it correctly. Um, distribute electrons by placing bonds between atoms. One bond is two electrons. Use remaining electrons to satisfy the duet rule. You're going to distribute the extra electrons. We'll look at some examples. That's the best way to see how to do this. Um, if all of the valence electrons are used and an atom doesn't have an octet, then, then um, you're going to form multiple bonds where possible. Okay? So that's what we're going to be looking at here. 
The other way to do this is to use the Honk 1, 2, 3, 4 rule for neutral compounds. Again, if you, don't, if you have something that's not a neutral compound, it's charged, I, won't, I, I really I highly recommend you take the extra step to count electrons. Um, so here we go here. Let's start the Lewis structure for CH3Cl. Okay? I'm going to add up electrons first. Carbon has four electrons. Hydrogens has, um, there's how many hydrogens? We have three hydrogens. So three times one electron. So that's three electrons. And chlorine has seven. If we add that all up, we get 14 electrons total. So by the way, that number, when you add up all the electrons, should be even. If it's not even, that means that you have an unpaired electron. That is called a radical. I will not be giving you anything that has a radical. So if that number is not even, you've made a mistake. Go back and see where you made the mistake, OK? Now, Honk 1, 2, 3, 4 rule. Carbon needs four bonds. So let's draw carbon with four bonds. Hydrogen has one bond. So we can put a hydrogen. And it doesn't matter where on this four you put the hydrogen. You can go here. You can go here. And then we have a chlorine left over. And uh, now let's add up the electrons. We have two for each bond. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, that works out really well. That was just using the Honk rule, but also the condensed structure does tell us that we have a CH3. And then that's bonded to a CL. So I mean, we really didn't need, you know, we could use any of those. That's an easy one to draw, OK? And then we just give chlor uh, chlorine its lone pairs. And because it's neutral, we, um, we know we're not going to have any um, formal charges on any atoms, OK? So hopefully, they'll all be that easy on the test, huh? That is multiple ways to do it. All right. Oh, I do want to, you, I know you've already turned the page. Sorry about that. I do want to say a couple things here. Don't forget to bra, draw non-bonding electrons or lone pairs. also known as lone pairs. If it's a Lewis structure, I want to see all of them. And don't use lines for lone pairs in OCHEM. I know you like that little shortcut, but we don't use it in OCHEM. So what I mean is, and let's change the color here so it shows up a little better. We don't want to do this. OK, and so the re reason why we're, 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 I'm just showing you a bunch of shortcuts. So we, we don't take away your lines because we, we want to make you take longer to draw. We take away the lines because they can be very confusing. Okay? Like, so for example, like if you have a carbon with a line, is that a carbon or is it a chlorine? And since we have formal charges, if you have a line there, what if, that's, what if you have a negatively charged chlorine? Is, it, is, it, is the line for the lone pair or is, did you leave off the negative charge? And the other thing is we use curvy arrows when we're drawing when we're reacting uh, molecules with each other. And if you use a curvy arrow, you know, you have an, if, let's say you had an arrow coming in somewhere here, OK? Um, now, that seems super clear there, but um, you haven't graded 400 exams um, to see that it can be very confusing and unclear. So no lines for lone pairs here, OK? So we just take a little extra time to draw the lone pairs. OK. I already did the shortcut. 
follow the honk one, two, three, four rule. Okay, but let's just do it here anyway. Carbon, four bonds. Hydrogen and chlorine, one bond each. And so carbon has four bonds, so it's got to have four bonds here, four bonds, three of them to hydrogen, um, one of them to chlorine. All right, let's do the structure for ethylene. So when we get into 51B, um, you'll be able to draw ethylene just by being given the name. Right now, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and add up electrons for ethylene. We have two carbons. So two times four equals eight electrons. We have four hydrogens. Four times one equals four electrons. We have 12 altogether. Okay. And so it says there's a CH2 followed by CH2. So let's draw the CH2. CH2. Again, these bond angles don't make any difference here. It's a Lewis structure. Now let's um, distribute electrons. We've already distributed some of them. We have two for every bond, two, four, six, eight, ten. One more pair of electrons, okay? Let's put that here. We could put that on either carbon. Okay, so we, 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 we see that this one does not have an octet. If we have a lone pair next door and we have, don't have an octet, that means we can draw a bond there. So we can just take these electrons and move them. I'm going to move them so they're between the two carbons. So I'm going to turn that lone pair into a covalent bond. And then I'm going to draw it like this. And again, these hydrogens that are on the top, if you drew them going down, doesn't matter. Okay, it's the same compound. Questions on that one? Anybody? Okay, CH3, CHOH plus. Mm. Okay, let's do that. We have two carbons. That's two times four electrons. I'm going to go across this way, have a little bit more room that way. We have five hydrogens. That would be five times one. We have one oxygen. That's six electrons. We have a positive charge. Okay, so technically this, this should be drawn like this with that positive charge outside the bracket because that positive charge is not going to be on hydrogen. So that should be drawn outside the brackets. Okay, plus a, um, a charge. If it's a positive charge, we remove an electron. If it's a negative charge, we add an electron. It's an easy thing to forget. I'm going to remove an electron because it's a positive charge, minus one electron. And then that it ends up to 18 electrons. Easy to forget to do that. If I forgot to do that, then I would have 19 electrons, and I would say to myself, wait, this is supposed to be even. If it's not even, I've made a mistake. And then you look, and it's 18 electrons. Okay? So let's distribute the 18 electrons here. Um, but first of all, let's take that condensed structure and convert it into, to show how the, the bonding is, has in this molecule. So we have CH, three, we have carbon bonded to hydrogen, and then we have an oxygen bonded to hydrogen. So it looks like that, should look like that. All right, we have 18 electrons to distribute. 
Let's distribute those 18 electrons. We've got how many so far? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I'm gonna distribute the electrons to the more electronegative atom first, okay? So since I don't really have a central atom here, I'm gonna give them to uh, oxygen here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, okay? So if I draw it like that, then looks like oxygen's not charged, carbon's not charged, but this is charged. What's the charge on that? Positive, Positive charge. So you can see that by looking at it, you could use the formula, you could memorize it, or the way I do it is, is I, what I say is, okay, this carbon here owns one electron from each of these bonds for the purposes of, for, of formal charge only. One electron from each bond. So carbon owns one, two, three, it should be four. So it's down one electron, okay? Now you can draw it that way or you know, you see something without an octet. So what did we do over here? We should put a positive charge here. What did we do? When we have a lone pair right next to a positive charge, that means that we can move those electrons here and we can make a, a bond there, okay? So we actually have two different ways to draw this structure. So if you drew either of these, they would both be correct. They're two resonant structures. When we have multiple ways that we can draw something, those are resonant structures. So now the oxygen had blue two lone pairs. One of those lone pairs we moved over, and notice I put the arrow, the curvy arrow to move those two electrons halfway in between the carbon and the oxygen. We've taken that lone pair and we've turned it into a covalent bond. Now this carbon is no longer charged, but this oxygen is charged. So let's, let's do it that way. So oxygen owns all the lone pairs and one electron from each bond. One, two, three, four, five. Five electrons, it should be six, right? Oxygen, it's group six, should be six, so that has, means that we have a positive charge there. Okay, again, feel free to use the formula, but don't, I will see exams where students use the formula for every single atom, including the hydrogens, including things that have a zero um, formal charge, and those are students that don't finish the exam. Okay, so I want you to make sure that you're only calculating that for things that um, need it. So, don't forget formal charges. And also make a little check for yourself. Each structure should have the same net charge. All right, so if structure number one, we know the overall structure has to have a positive charge. Structure number one has a positive charge. Structure number two has a positive charge, okay? So I, in, in order to go from structure one to structure two, I used a curvy arrow. Curvy arrows show movement of a pair of electrons. The, um, and it's really important you have the, have the right direction, okay? So the tail shows where the electrons are coming from. Let's draw it this way begins at the current position of the electrons. The curvy arrows, um, and the head shows the new position of the electrons. So this arrow came from this lone pair here. It's gonna, the arrows are gonna come from either a lone pair or a bond. This comes here from this lone pair. That's where they are currently located. This shows where we're moving them, between those two, that carbon and that oxygen. All right, questions? Any questions? on that. Important points about this example. I have a question for you. Yeah. When it comes to the curvy arrow, does it matter whether you put um, only one side of the arrow or make it like two? It does matter. In this case, we're moving two electrons, so we have a full head on the arrow. If we're moving a single electron, we use a half a head on the arrow. Okay, so fish hook. All right, more questions? All right, so we can represent this above molecule by more than one Lewis structure. So 
If I gave you this molecule and asked you to draw the Lewis structure on the test, you would get credit for either one of those structures. They would both be correct. Resonance structure is different only in the arrangement of electrons, not in connectivity. So when we draw resonance structures, we don't want to be moving around atoms. Atoms stay exactly where they are. We only move electrons. Okay? And we use a resonance arrow. This is a resonance arrow. Generally speaking, when we have a series of resonance structures, we use a resonance arrow and we use brackets. We also use brackets to indicate resonance structures. The actual structure of the molecule is a resonance hybrid of these two structures. They are not in equilibrium. So I'm going to write that in red. They are not in equilibrium. All caps for that. Because there's a tendency, even when you know this and you learn this, to still think of them going back and forth. They are not in equilibrium. So let's review our arrows. We have a resonance arrow here, equilibrium arrow. We have an arrow going one direction, we have an arrow going the other, um, or we have it like this. You'll see both of those. Those are equilibrium arrows, not to be confused with the resonance arrow. We have a reaction arrow, you know, A plus B goes to C, that's straight. And then we have curvy arrows. So this answers your question over here. That's a curvy arrow showing the movement of a pair of electrons, and then we have a fish hook arrow showing the movement of a single electron. So those are all the arrows, so that's not an equilibrium arrow. We're going to need an analogy for this because it's hard not to think of those things um, going back and forth. So um, this is a plum, this is an apricot, this is a pluot. Okay? So you cross a plum and an aquapot, you get a pluot. So the pluot is the analogy for the hybrid. When you have a pluot sitting in your hand, it is not changing back and forth from a plum to an apricot to a plum to an apricot, from a plum to an apricot. It's a pluot, okay? So that's the true structure. So our hybrid is the pluot. That's the true structure of the molecule. And I can say that a, a bunch of times, but you're always going to think of that thing going back and forth. Um, but yeah, they're not, they're not going back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a hybrid structure. Now again, weird stuff happens when you go from a Mac to a PC, so number four should be correct on your page. So I want you, I want you to be able to draw hybrid structures, and I think that seems to be the hardest thing in this chapter for students to draw the hybrid. So, what you're going to do is you're going to draw everything that's not changing, all of the single bonds you're going to draw. You're going to draw dotted lines for pi bonds that are changing location or not showing in every resonance structure. You're going to do that. When I draw hybrids, I leave off lone pairs. I completely ignore them. It's too confusing. So forget about the lone pairs. Draw the bonds. Any bonds that are changing are dotted. Partial charges for charges that are changing location. So in that last structure, we had a positive charge on carbon. In one of the structures, we had a negative charge. Um, on, we had a zero a neutral charge on carbon. And then in the other structure, we had a positive charge on oxygen. In the other structure, we had a zero formal charge. So that means those would be partial charges. And um, to make this easier, I don't know how it did that with to make this easier, but let's draw, the, let's draw a hybrid structure for that compound we just drew. I'm drawing in the lines that are not changing, single bonds between each of the atoms. Okay. And I'm going to scroll back up to see which one I drew first. You don't have to turn the page. It's all the way up here. <coughs> all right, so, in the, so notice in the first structure here, I have a single bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Here I have a double bond. So that's the, the pi bond's going to be dotted. I'm leaving off the lone pairs because it gets too confusing. 
In this structure right here, a positive charge on carbon, in this structure it's zero, so it'll be a partial positive. In this structure, I have a zero charge on oxygen. In this structure, I have a positive charge, so that will be a positive. Okay, so let's go back and do that. All right, so dotted line here. Positive, partial positive here, because we're changing charge on that atom. Oxygen here also has a partial positive charge. And so what we see is that the positive charge is shared between two atoms. It's not just on one of them, it's shared. Okay, so the positive charge. is shared between the carbon and the oxygen. So we have delocalized electrons. That's going to be a big deal here in this class, delocalized electrons. Okay, and the reason these are positive is that we have, um, for this carbon right here, it has a positive charge in the first structure. and zero charge in the second. And the same thing goes for the, um, the same thing goes for the other. Okay, so that's how, that's what I would want if I have you draw a hybrid. Questions on drawing hybrids, anybody? <coughs> If you wanted to, um, in one resonance structure, the oxygen has two lone pairs. In the other resonance structure, it only has one, so I would just draw one lone pair here. But again, I, I really think it's easier if you don't do that. Okay? More questions on hybrids? More important, important points about resonance structures. Resonance structures are not real. Okay? Any individual resonance structure does not accurately represent the structure of the molecule, only the hybrid does. So the hybrid's real, the resonance structures are not real. That being said, we're going to be drawing resonance structures all year long, so they're real enough for that we need to draw them. Um, they're not in equilibrium, we already said that. They're not isomers. Two isomers differ in the arrangement of both atoms and electrons, whereas resonance structures differ only in the arrangement of electrons. Okay? So for example, if we go from here to here, if we take the, the electrons in one of those pi bonds and we move it on to oxygen, we get this structure. So the electron pair moves to a different location. I have not moved any atoms. I'm just moving electrons. That means that to a different location. That means they are resonance structures. Over here, you can see that, okay, we're, we're moving electrons and we're moving an atom. So this hydrogen here is bonded to oxygen, and now it's bonded to here. So, so the atom is moving to a different location. It's a hydrogen moves to a new location. So we say, um, the term we'd use for that is they have different connectivity. The atoms are connected differently. Um, so these are actually constitutional isomers. So, so I rarely use the word just isomers, okay? Because we want to be more specific. These would be constitutional isomers. So, so same molecular formula different connectivity. All right. Okay, some more things I want to say about these resonance structures. 
they're not equivalent in energy. So when we draw a hybrid, we kind of draw it as if that hybrid we've already drawn is kind of like you have 50% of this one and 50% of that one. It's not really true in reality. So one of the things we want to be able to do is rank resonance structures so we can see which one's more important, which one's less important. Okay? So um, what makes a good resonance structure? Well, the best resonance structures are the most stable. So let's look at what we're going to be looking for. Rule number one. These are, um, by the way, these are in order of importance. In order of importance. I wrote that in a different color so that would stand out. The most important thing is rule number one. Resonance structures with more bonds and fewer charges are more stable. Resonance structures in which every atom has an octet are more stable. Resonance structures that place a negative charge on more electronegative atom are more stable. Okay, so rule number one and rule number two go together and they are the most important. So, for example, coming straight out of GCHEM, if I asked you which one of these resonance structures was most important, 99% of you would say that one's more important because oxygen's more electronegative than carbon, and so it's much less happy with a positive charge. That's what most of you would say. However, um, this carbon does not have an octet. This carbon also has, this also has one less covalent bond here. Okay? There's one less covalent bond here. So it's not, it's not the best one. Okay? So we would call this one minor. We would call this one major. So the charge is the last thing you look at. The first thing you look at is, have we maximized the number of covalent bonds? Do all atoms have an octet? So this is a minor. We call this a minor resonance contributor. And this is a major resonance contributor. Okay, so if we count all the covalent bonds, we have fewer. We have um, fewer covalent bonds by one. We only have seven. Over here, we have eight more covalent bonds. That's better, more important. Here we have eight. Carbon has no octet. Over here, all atoms have an octet. And this, this first resonance, the second resonance structure does have, in all honesty, it's got one knock against it. So here, um, positive charge on more electronegative atom. So that's bad, but it's not bad enough to make this one, it's not bad enough to make this one the worst resonance structure. The one with the carbocation is the worst resonance structure. All right, so um, we want to look for the, these following features in order of importance. There are a couple additional points I want to make. It is okay to have carbon with less than an octet in a resonance structure. Carbon gets a free ride here. Carbon can have, uh, would be without an octet in a resonance structure. We even have a name for it, carbocation. But it is never, but never draw oxygen, nitrogens, or the halogens without an octet. Now, there are a couple of questions in Smith where they do just that. Not okay. I don't, you will, never, you will never draw it in any of my exams for the whole year, okay? Don't draw resonance structures with a two plus or a two minus charge. Ugh. There's a couple of times when they do them. Are you seeing things like um, ozone, we have three oxygens in a row. 
I will never have you draw a 2 plus or a 2 minus charge on anything ever, okay? Extremely minor should never be included. Never ever exceed an octet for second row elements. No Texas carbon, no pentavalent carbon, okay? It's only going to have four bonds. Okay, there is an additional, um, under the practice link, we have lots of extra things we throw in there. And there's a, a little handout about drawing resonance structures. I think it would be worth your while to take a look at that. This is one of the most important things we learn that we will need a good grounding in all year. I do want to come back. We're not going to be able to finish it, but I do want to come back. And um, we have an in-class activity. I didn't get enough done, so we can't, probably won't finish it, but we will finish it at the beginning of class the last time, next time. Okay, so what do I want here? Tell me what you want to do. I want to open up this. Come on. Or maybe we won't. Word is not responding. Okay. Hang on, we're going to get started here. We've got a minute and a half. We're going to take advantage of that minute and a half. Come on, where is it? All right. So, and you can work on this at home, and we're going to come back and talk about it on Friday. So, when, when we did this, we said, if you have, oh, sorry, I have to do the ink tools here. So, here's what we're looking at. Condensed structure, CH3CO2H, we said it looks like this, not this, not this. And so what we're, what we're going to do, and we will work in groups when we come back. It's too late to do it right now. But we'll we, were, we will work in groups. And I want you to draw a, res, a, a Lewis structure for this, for this, and for this. And so in other words, add up all the electrons, distribute them, do exactly what we did in class today. And what you're going to find out is there's a problem with this one and a problem with this one. We'll talk more about that on Friday.